in the face of certain facts we are helpless but we are never helpless with regards to how we make use of those facts okay so let's say I am traveling and I'm sitting on a train and I'm looking out the window and as I look out the window certain features of the landscape trees and buildings uh, move through across my vision now when these features of the landscape these trees and these buildings cross my vision I'm not willing it I'm not willing them to move through my field of vision they just naturally occur they just happen to cross my vision and sometimes this is the way I imagine that my thoughts and my feelings emerge and the way I imagine my consciousness to happen especially when I come across statements made by scientists like this one by Crick who uh, question the role of consciousness in our everyday life they say that it's not causal for example Crick says you your joys and your sorrows your memories and your ambitions your sense of personal identity and free will are in fact no more than the behavior of a vast assembly of nerve cells and their associated molecules or another scientist Rodolfo Linas who says that basically to be conscious is merely to know what happens next and not deciding what happens next just knowing what happens next and he gives the example of him being stimulated in a certain part of his brain that caused his leg to move outwards and they repeated this stimulation and they uh, agreed beforehand that he will try to move it inwards but he always moved it outwards and he always reported afterwards that he changed his mind and that's why he moved it outwards instead and they did it till he had to realize that his consciousness is merely knowing what happens next and that's why he thought that he changed his mind it was an illusion or Gerald, Edel Gerald Edelman who says that consciousness is not causal it's entailed by the activities in the brain and he says that this entailment is actually a faithful rep uh, faithfully reflecting what happens so there is no time lag between our decisions and actions it's a simultaneous event in other words what happens in the brain entails this feeling we have these feelings and thoughts and uh, intelligence precedes consciousness when I decide to scratch my nose now or to use this particular word word they arise on their own accord these activities intelligence is not consciousness it's not behind my eyes this clear space that moves this body and decides to scratch this nose intelligence is this whole it's just happening 
whatever I do, whatever I feel and think just happens on its own accord. It's so hard to really, to really realize this thing. I don't think I have realized it yet. But anyway, what I want to say is that if this is the case, that our life is basically reduced to this process which is which is almost determined in the sense that we carry out what is characteristic of our physiology because we are constrained to what is given to us within ourselves It's not it's not as it's not such a sorry state to be in. It's not such a dire condition because we are not isolated. Because even if we are constrained to a fate, let's say our life is running a course it has a fate this course can be modulated by encountering others and getting into situations that can change our cognitive biases that can bring about shifts in our preferences when we meet such personalities who influence us to adopt certain habits or to pursue certain hobbies, for example, there is hope, isn't there? So when you think of it in terms of being in company and being surrounded with others, then it's not determined. Even if you attract and have a tendency to drift into situations that are uh, characteristic of your build up by exposing yourself to differences and encountering differences by chance your life the course of your life can take a benef beneficial turn and this is why it is important for parents that, there's, that their children study in, in good schools or this is why it can be really helpful for a person who is susceptible or prone to suffer from depression to really get into the company of such people who help her get rid of this uh, tendency or who scaffold her life and that's the role of all of us really to scaffold each other's lives to have good influence on others and to be open to good influences So, even if this uh, idea of the mind or the consciousness that is not causal is true, it doesn't mean that we are prisoners or something like that. I think it means something much more. It means that we are naturally, unbelievably intelligent.